Chemical Kinetics Part 7, Analyzing Reaction Mechanisms. Okay, so before we get started, let's go ahead and remind ourselves of a few things that we talked about in the previous lecture. And we defined a reaction mechanism as a sequence of elementary reactions that we call elementary steps that are involved in the conversion of reactants to products. So that is a reaction mechanism. The slowest step in a chemical reaction determines the kinetics for the entire reaction. So it controls the rate, and we call it the rate limiting step or the rate determining step. And elementary steps that are faster than the slow step are invisible as far as the overall kinetics of the reaction. An intermediate is a transient species involved in a mechanism step, or more than one, that is not a reactant or a product. So it's only present for a short period of time. Now we're going to analyze two types of reaction mechanisms. And the first is a reaction where the first step in the mechanism is the slow step. Those are fairly straightforward and easy. The second type of reaction mechanism we are going to analyze is a reaction involving one or more fast equilibrium steps. Our example will have one fast equilibrium step, but I'll do other examples where there is more than one. So the general procedure for writing a rate law from a reaction mechanism is to start by finding the slow step in the mechanism. And you want to write the rate law for that step first. That is what you do first. Now, once you have the rate law for the slow step, look and see if there are any intermediates in that rate law. And if there are, then you're going to have to use other steps as necessary to substitute for those intermediates if they're present. Now, it's helpful to keep in mind that steps after the slow step will not be used in writing the rate law. Okay. So here is a reaction mechanism. So here's an overall reaction. Nitrogen dioxide reacts with carbon monoxide to produce nitrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide. The proposed mechanism involves two nitrogen dioxide molecules colliding to form these products. And this is the slow step with rate constant K1. In step two, you take nitrogen trioxide and carbon monoxide and in a fast step, you're going to produce these products. Now, the experimental rate law for this reaction is rate equals K, so that's the rate constant, nitrogen dioxide to the second power. So it's a second order reaction. So what we want to know is whether this mechanism could be correct. And the way that we're going to demonstrate whether it is or is not is by writing the rate law for the mechanism and we are going to compare it to the experimental rate law and see if it matches. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the proposed mechanism steps add up to the overall reaction. And so basically we're going to add these two chemical equations together and see if we get the overall reaction. So if we add up everything on the reactant side, and then we add up everything on the product side, and then we're going to cancel out intermediates, so things that show up on both sides of the equation. Now what we need to do is cancel out any molecules that show up on both sides of the equation. So we can see that one of the nitrogen dioxides is canceled out and nitrogen trioxide is canceled out. And when we write what is left, then we end up with this reaction, which does match our overall reaction that we started with. So the first hurdle is crossed. So we want to write the rate law for the slow step in the mechanism. And the first step in this mechanism is the slow step. And remember, since it's an elementary step, we can just write the rate law by inspection using the coefficients. And so the rate law that we get from our mechanism is right here, okay? So we have the slow step, it's the first step. Nitrogen dioxide reacts with nitrogen dioxide 
with rate constant K1. And so writing it by inspection, we get this rate law. If we condense this, so nitrogen dioxide times nitrogen dioxide is nitrogen dioxide squared. So then we end up with this rate law. And does it match the observed rate law? And indeed it does. So this mechanism may be correct. Now, writing the rate law for a mechanism with a slow first step is very, very easy, as you can see. Basically, you write it for the slow step, and you see if it matches. Because steps after the slow step are not going to show up in the rate law. OK, so let's look at the next type of reaction. And that is a reaction involving one or more fast equilibrium steps. So before we do that, we actually need to know what a fast equilibrium step is. And so here's a reaction with A being converted to B. And this is a reversible reaction. So the forward reaction rate constant is K1. The backward reaction rate constant is K minus 1, sub minus 1. And so we have B going to A in the back reaction and A going to B in the forward reaction. And so here they are written separately. Okay, so let's write the rate law for the forward reaction. So that is A going to B with rate constant K1. And so we could write that as rate equals K1 concentration of A. That's the rate law for the forward reaction. Now the rate law for the backward reaction is written in a similar way, except now we're going to start here with B, and we're going to write rate equals K sub minus 1, that's the rate constant for the back reaction, concentration of B, because for the back reaction, B is the reactant. So the rate equals K1 concentration of A for the forward reaction, and the rate for the backward reaction is K minus 1 concentration of B. Now the important thing about a fast equilibrium step is that the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the back reaction. That doesn't mean the rate constants are equal. It means that the overall rates are equal. And so because the forward reaction rate is equal to the backward rate of reaction at equilibrium, we can set those two equal to each other. So here's the rate of the forward reaction, and here's the rate of the back reaction. We set those equal. OK, so let's look at an example now. So we have an overall reaction where we are reacting nitrogen monoxide with oxygen to produce nitrogen dioxide. And there is a proposed mechanism for this reaction where we are dimerizing nitrogen monoxide, so reacting two nitrogen monoxide molecules to produce dinitrogen dioxide in a fast equilibrium step. And step two of the mechanism is to take this dinitrogen dioxide, react it with oxygen, and end up with nitrogen dioxide as a product. And the observed rate law for this reaction is rate equals K observed, which is what we observe in experiment, nitrogen monoxide squared, so that's second order in nitrogen monoxide, and then oxygen. So this is the observed rate law for this reaction, and here is the proposed mechanism that involves a fast equilibrium step. And what we want to ask ourselves is, could this mechanism be correct? And so what we are going to do is derive the rate law for this mechanism and then compare it to our experimental rate law. Now the first thing, of course, is to check to make sure that the steps add to the overall reaction. And when we do that, we can see that the dinitrogen dioxide cancels out. That is an intermediate. So we have two nitrogen monoxide reacting with oxygen. That's up here. And we end up with, that. that's canceled out. So then we end up with two nitrogen dioxide molecules. 
So these do add to the overall reaction. So we've checked that. Now we need to write the rate law for the slow step. So let's do that. Let's find the slow step. And it's the second step. And we can write it by inspection from the reactants. And so the rate is equal to K2 because it's the second step. That's the rate constant for the second step. Dinitrogen dioxide, coefficient of 1, so to the first power, and oxygen to the first power. Now, there is an intermediate in this rate law, and that is not allowed. We are not allowed to have intermediates in the rate law. So we need to do something about that. And what we are going to do is find another step in the mechanism where dinitrogen dioxide shows up. In this case, it is in the fast equilibrium step as a product. So we are going to use that first step to substitute for this dinitrogen dioxide. So what are we going to do? We are going to do the same thing that we did before, and we're going to write the rate of the forward reaction equal to the rate of the back reaction, because we have a fast equilibrium step. So here's the rate of the forward reaction, okay? And we just can write it by inspection, because it's an elementary step. And then here's the rate of the back reaction, K minus 1, dinitrogen dioxide. And now that we have that, we're going to be able to solve for this and then substitute for dinitrogen dioxide in the rate law. So let's go ahead and do that. So we are going to solve for dinitrogen dioxide. And basically, we're just going to divide both sides by k minus 1, so the backward rate constant. And we end up with this quantity. Okay, so K1 over K minus 1 nitrogen monoxide squared. Now, we're going to take this quantity because it's equal to this intermediate. We're going to take this quantity and we're going to substitute it back into the rate law for dinitrogen dioxide. Okay, so we do have an intermediate in our rate law. So just rewriting, here's our rate law for the slow step. This is what we came up with for the slow step. And we have nit dinitrogen dioxide in the rate law for the slow step. We have used the fast equilibrium step that comes previously, the first step. We set the forward rate equal to the back rate. And we solved for dinitrogen dioxide. And we ended up with this quantity. Now we're going to take this quantity, which is equal to dinitrogen dioxide, and we're going to plug it in right here for the intermediate. So after we collect all the rate constants and multiply them together, okay, so K1 over K minus 1, there they are, and then K2, which was right here. So I've collected all those guys together, and we have nitrogen monoxide squared, so that's right here. And then this was already there, so oxygen was already in that rate law. So this is our rate law that we derived from the mechanism. Now we're going to compare it to the experimental rate law. And remember that the rate constant, we labeled it as K observed. And basically, that means that in real life, we can't really separate out all these little rate constants. And these are all multiplied together. And we see them experimentally as an observed rate constant, one observed rate constant. So we can say that this matches, OK, because we can't really separate them all out. So here is an observed rate constant. And our reactants match, OK? So nitrogen monoxide and oxygen. So everything matches. So the rate law does match. So this mechanism could be correct. OK, so I will post example problems separately, additional reaction mechanism problems. And next, we're going to talk about collision theory and activation energy.